personally come up when Gabby's leading. No, it's good. I, I really uh, appreciate that. It was uh, wonderful to worship and just hear your voices as we worship to, uh, together. It's beautiful to be able to do that. And hear our voices worshiping and blessing the Lord. So I was enjoying as Gabby led and playing the guitar, but I was also listening as we together were just loving on the Lord. He's such a great God and worthy of our praise. And his mercies indeed are new every day. Thank you, Lord, for the freshness of who he is to us and the exaltation of his name, Jesus. We have a, a, just a couple of announcements this morning that I would like to uh, give to you. Um, firstly, it is hard to believe, but we are the last Sunday of August. I'm not sure what happened. And uh, much to Cheryl's chagrin, September 1st will be happening. <laughs> Later in the week. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, that's me for you. That being said and done, as we do approach this next season and into the fall, I believe we will have three groups again. During the week, we will have our uh, worship group, which will be on Thursday nights, and that was a tremendous blessing last year. And so we usually start off with that at 6 Thursday, and we have a time of prayer, connection, a little devotional before we get into our practice. And sometimes we have people come, and that's all great. If you just want to come for that piece, you're welcome, right? It goes about 30 minutes or so. Don't hold us to that. could be a little less. could be a little more. And then we move into practice. And uh, so we found some people just love to come and take that in. And, and uh, we appreciate that. And I know I do. So, uh, so that's on Thursday nights. Then we'll have men's group. I believe it's going to be again on Tuesday nights, 7 o'clock. And ladies group. I believe that's going to happen again on Wednesdays. Again at, uh, at Deb Dustin's house as well. So uh, these groups took a break over the summer. And that's just part of the process of life. It's good for renewal. It's good to, to move in other directions, to refresh ourselves, and to have our holidays, and to allow the Lord to touch us in new and fresh ways, and then come back fresh in the fall. So I look forward to that as well. So that'll be happening. So just be aware of that, and trust you'll consider that. And think about that as we get into that. Don't, not this week, because we're still in summer. Right, Cheryl? Right. But whenever that happens. Yeah. Right. So there's that later on. Right, thanks. <clears throat> we'll work this out together, you and I. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, at this point, there's no children's ch church being planned for the fall. Uh, as was announced last uh, May and June, Margaret has stepped down, and uh, so we don't have someone to lead that. We don't have enough people to offer that. So if God's stirring your heart, you can let me know. Uh, we appreciate any thoughts on that, but, uh, but that's where that sits right now, okay? Um, so at this point, no children's church plan for the fall. Uh, worship soaking night tonight, and so looking forward to that again, Janet, and Janet has blessed our hearts and has been preparing these, this monthly set of songs, and so they are prepared for us, soaked in prayer, and just sensing what the Spirit has said, and then Janet brings that together for us on Sunday nights, and so we have the music on, and we have the visual that goes with it appropriately, and we just have, we call it soaking worship. It's just an hour in the presence of God, no other agenda, not an order of service, there's no announcements, there's nothing else, just you and Jesus and us together. So that's tonight at 6.30, and we usually go about an hour, and then I'll pause, or someone will, like probably me this tonight, I guess, and just say, you know, has the Holy Spirit said something to you you'd like to share? And then we have a few songs after that again. That's sort of the normal process, but all subject to how we feel the Lord leading us, but that's kind of the way it goes. So that's tonight, and I'm looking forward to that. It is really a blessing to just be with the Lord, and so I encourage you to come. And if you get, you know, that you can't make that whole hour, don't worry about it. Just come, be with the Lord for as long as you can. It's all good, right? So... So uh, that's tonight. So anyway, those are the things going on. 
All right. Well, let's pray as we look into God's Word today, together today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, look in your Word. And we thank you that we've been able to worship you. We thank you, Lord, we've been able to have coffee together and connect. And uh, now, Lord, we ask for the service tonight, uh, when we have this, the worship night, Lord Jesus, that, that you would prepare the hearts of all of us that come and that you will move upon us this evening and that you would speak to us in fresh ways. We also pray for this morning's service, and particularly the sermon, the message. And We ask, Lord, that you would speak. Uh, Lord, it is more than the messenger. You are the messenger. You are the messenger. And so, Lord, be the messenger. Come, Holy Spirit. You are our teacher. You are the one that comforts. You are the one that pulls back the veil and reveals to us things that set us free, that heal us, that encourage us, that, that bring us deeper into you. And so, Lord, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us, that you would be our messenger today as we open your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to speak uh, this morning on uh, the wells, the wells of our spiritual life the wells of our spiritual life. And I felt that, that that would be an appropriate message and thought for this morning. I'm going to take a text from Genesis chapter 26 as my launch off point, if you will, as we talk about the story of Isaac to begin with in Genesis chapter 26. And I'm going to read from the 12th verse, several verses. And it says this in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 12. It says that Isaac planted crops in that land in the same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very, very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there, and he encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham. Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there, but the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen and said, the water is ours. So he named the well Essek, Essek meaning dispute, because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna, because he had opposition. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. And so he named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. We'll stop there for now. And so to Isaac, Isaac knew that it was very important to have wells because they needed water. They needed water. Isaac, so he, so he reopened the wells that his father had dug. But because they had been neglected and therefore were full of soil, etc. But they were also filled and stopped up after he arrived as a result of envy and as a result of of quarrels. That's all very interesting for us today. I also want to mention that two of our families this week dug water wells. <laughs> and that's pretty exciting stuff, right? So Dwayne and Karen, Murray and Janet, congratulations, praise the Lord. Struck water, I heard, I understand. Well, that's good. <laughs> so that's good. So there is that as well. And uh, I mean, 
pretty hard to build a house if you don't have adequate water. We need water when it comes to building houses, and so they've been waiting for some time for that to come to pass. So we're so thankful and appreciate how that's all worked out for them and their steadfastness and moving forward with all that. But you see, Isaac could identify with that. He had herds, and he had servants, and he had a family, and he needed water in order, in a very, very just realistic way to sustain all the people that he had. Well, we're going to take that, and we're going to talk about wells, not just physical wells and physical water, which is so important to physical life, but we're going to talk about wells today that we need in our lives that enhance and strengthen our spiritual life so we don't shrivel, right? And how important that is. And so it's, an, it's entering a new season. I know it's a long time from now, but eventually at some point September is going to happen. Right? Is that okay? Okay. I'm working at it. But there will be a new season coming in the near future. Sorry. And a and, uh, new season, such as the fall, is a chance and a time to refocus, right? And so we think of refocusing, we think about it, sometimes we'll think about it relating to our jobs and, and the work that we have. Sometimes we think of it in, in connection with our family or our marriage or different things we would like to do or, or we think about maybe a course we want to take or we think about something in the community we'd like to be involved in. You know, all those kinds of things. And within that context, church as well, and our involvement in the body of Christ. Thus, the announcements about midlife, midweek groups, right? And so forth. But what we need to realize as we think about all the things we like to do, within all of that context, we also need and should think about what imparts life to us. But also what... It, imparts to us spiritual life to us because that's what brings the water of the Holy Spirit into our lives, that our spirits don't become dry, right? But they're healthy, and we are able, therefore, to be all that the Lord desires us to be. So I want to talk about impart, what imparts spiritual life. I'm not going to hit them all, but I'm going to hit a few what gives us waters of hope? What gives us waters of meaning? What gives us waters of encouragement? What gives us waters of, in short, spirituality in our lives? For we are spiritual beings. As we look at the scriptures, the Bible tells us, I believe, that we are spirits that possess souls that live in bodies. And our earth gets it backwards and sees us as bodies that have souls, and maybe we got a spirit. You know, I'm talking about emphasis. But that's who we are, so therefore we need to think about that as we come into a new season. Just good to remember. So, little reminder. So, first well is in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. The words of Isaiah the prophet, and he said this, Isaiah 12, verse 2, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. It's amazing what it says. It speaks of within the context he says, he says here, he said, the Lord is my salvation. I'm going to trust in him. He is my strength. He is my song. He is the one that delivers. He is the one that saves. He is the one that redeems. He is the one who rescues. All of that is conveyed within that word of salvation. And then he goes on, so, so with joy, I will draw from those wells in my life. Now here is a guy, as an Old Testament say, that had favor with God, and yet as one who had favor with God, 
who had an anointing of a prophet, says, I will dwell there. I will draw upon those wells. There is deep joy within that. So I rely upon that well. Sometimes we think, well, you know, well, we think, well, we think, been there, got that, move on. No, I live there. So I live there in that whole reality. It is a, it, we, we, we need to draw from the depths of that well and the all-inclusiveness of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a well. He is our well. And so it is based on the gospel, which is a gospel of the grace of the living God. It says in Ephesians chapter 2 and in the fifth verse, Ephesians 2, 5, even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. It's his grace. So we draw from those wells. We come into the kingdom of God. We come into relationship with Jesus Christ by grace. And we live our lives by grace. And the wells of his salvation, of his strength, and of his joy flow to us by his grace. Not by my effort and not by my attempt to earn something or to appease him in some fashion, but by his love, his mercy demonstrated in his grace to you and I. He gives us life. And we need his life. And as we come into a new season, we can't take that for granted. We need to, we need to draw upon that well. And so though, though it, is a, it is a message of grace, it is, a, it is one that, 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 that requires the proactivity of me engaging with him and drawing, as Isaiah, upon, upon those wells. There's strength in him. There's joy in him. There's peace in him. He says, so I will not be afraid. He said, what is that talking about? There is security. There is peace. There is comfort all within him. And so consider the well. And if you're listening to us today and you've never invited Christ into your life, Jesus to be your Lord, this would be a good season. This would be a good day. What better way to start the fall than to embrace the reality of who he is? To say, Jesus, I want you in my life, right? Just Jesus, I want you in my life. Maybe you don't understand what all that means. He'll help you. Just say, Jesus, I want you in my life. Help me. He'll take you the rest of the way. Because that's who he is, right? So Jesus I, I, Jesus, I say yes to you. Jesus, I want you in my life. Jesus, help me understand the well of salvation. Help me connect with you. I need you. Be my salvation. Pray that now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you've done that, and you're listening online, you can private message me, or reach out to somebody in the church family here. Reach out to me in another format, or to someone else. And, and Because the Bible says, what strengthens us is to be able to communicate that to be able to share that with someone, and they'll pray for you. But it also does something to us as we just do that. So there's that one well. But there's another well, a few more. Here's another one. There's the well of prayer. And Jesus talked to us about abiding in him. In John chapter 15, verse 5, it says this. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do, what was that again? Nothing. Abiding in him. He's the vine. We're the branches. As, as we move into a new season, it's, it's always a good idea for us in a new season to readdress and to refocus and remember the significance and importance of my relationship with him, right? Jesus again, I am the vine. You're the branches, so remain in me. Remain in me. Stay connected with me, right? I don't know how. Well, pray about it. 
talk to somebody. There's so many things. You know, I remember first little while when I was a Christian, I was looking for a verse that said, well, how long does that mean? How long should I pray? What, what does, what's the method? You know, what's the, you know, you won't, you won't find it. Hmm? We'll get principles, right? Truths that'll set you free, but it doesn't, this is between you and the Lord, right? Right? And I'm so glad he did that because all of our schedules are different. All our personalities are different. We're all wired different. Some of us find, you know, we have more, that we're more on our game and get up early in the morning and do that. And other people are like, please don't tell me to do that. I start snoring. You know, or, or, or I, I'm, not, I'm not built that way. I'm more of a night person. You know, so, or, or whatever, right? Or, and we go through different seasons in our lives. But the point is, it needs to be a focus in our lives to connect with him, right? The well of prayer. The fall, remember, you've got to rely on that. But I want to tell a story, and that's about... Um, oil and gas fracking, and my, my brother is uh, uh, involved in TRICAN uh, well services in, in Alberta, uh, and he's the VP for the fracking unit in, in, in that company, so that's why I sometimes think about oil and gas fracking, and so he's, been, he's spent his whole year doing this, and so he's an interesting guy to talk about that whole subject. But you know, oil fracking, if you study it or look at it, do any research on it in North America, it's become quite an industry that has allowed a lot of, a lot of oil wells to create flow again that were not being used very well or had a very poor ability to bring much oil or gas in. And so it's become quite a business. Oil and gas fracking is basically a procedure that will open up and increase the flow of oil and gas through those said wells. Oil fracking uh, through the chemicals and the liquid that they put in, the water and the sand, et cetera, et cetera, will actually, when it's put in the earth under pressure, will open up the wells. It will create further cracks with, within the bedrock areas where, where, where the well is, and it'll widen out those wells. It actually creates cracks within the bedrock that'll increase the flow. Uh, and so they found that to be very, very successful. When I think about wells, and I think about oil fracking, and what my brother's involved in, in Alberta, I think about this, beyond natural oil, to the spiritual oil of the Holy Spirit. And I think about the fact that when I pray, and I go into a new season, and I, and I, and I keep that, as a very sacred part of my life, whatever that looks like for me, right? What is happening is as I, as I worship him, as I pray, as I listen to the Spirit of God within that context and reality, it releases life into my spirit. That it goes down into the very bedrock of my mind and my soul and my spirit, and it opens up cracks. It opens up the bedrock within the foundation of my life, and somehow it's not a hurting pressure, but it is a, it is a releasing pressure that the Holy Spirit does that opens up the wells, that opens up areas and, uh, and cracks within my, my being that allows for a deeper flow of the Holy Spirit in my life, that allows for a more production of his life flowing through me. There is something profound about the well of prayer, the well of communing with God, the well of worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, that we need to hold on to that, you know? And sometimes we go into holiday season, you know, and we, 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 need, to, we, need, to, we need to decompress. We need to rest. We need to find our hobbies and our places. And, and I... And I and I have, uh, I have really found that I need that more and more in my life, you know? And, and you need that. But, but in that, so what happens in that? You, some of the rhythms are sort of put temporarily to the side to a certain extent. They're still there, but maybe they're not the same, you know, regimented way that you normally do. But what can happen is when we come back into a season where it, when, we're, when we're going full on, we, we need to be reminded by the Spirit of God, remember 
what is keeping the oil of the Holy Ghost flowing through you? And that is, we've got to keep communicating with him and listening to him and letting his spirit lead us through all that, right? Make sense? So keep worshiping, praying, listening to the Holy Ghost. So the well of prayer is so important in our lives. It, it really is such a, a focus in our lives and should be and needs to continue to be so. But be free in it, you know? Follow what God's saying to you. Don't be afraid to talk to each other, right? Say, hey, have you found anything interesting? You know, like we talked, somebody this morning was saying to him, hey, have you seen any new, new, new movies, uh, any, uh, any new series of shows you've been watching lately, right? And, and so I love talking about that. But what's wrong with saying, hey, uh, what, 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 what have you been doing lately? Spiritual, you know, right? You know, what's wrong with that, right? You know, and it may fit for you and it might not, but the information is good, right? Kind of helps, right? So share the wealth, <laughs> right? And uh, maybe God will speak to you in a fresh way, in any way, what that could look like. One more well. Well, i got a couple more, but next one, let's put it that way. Um, I remind you of community and the significance of community as we finish the season. The well of community. This is community. Family. The well of community. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. After they prayed, it says, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Acts 4, verse 31. Now, that was put in there for a reason in the book Acts, and it talked about the strength of community. A couple of the brothers had faced tremendous opposition within their culture and their society and what they were doing. And so what did they do? They got together with the body of Christ. They got together in fellowship. They knew where there was a, a meeting happening. I don't know if it was Sunday. I don't know if it was worship night. I don't know if it was ladies' night. Probably not. Man, or it was men's night, so it was a couple of guys. But whatever it was, they knew there was, that the church was gathering and they had been through a very difficult season. They had given a good testimony in front of the Sanhedrin, these 70-plus leaders, right, that would, came like judges in a semicircle and met before them and threatened them and told them never to talk about Jesus again, and they told their testimony profoundly and powerfully. But afterwards, they were in touch with what was happening. Are you in touch with what's happening? Are you in touch with what's happening? To you, I'm talking about. Be in touch with what's happening in your, we try to be in touch with what's happening in our body, be in touch with what's happening in your spirit, be in touch with what's happening in your soul. They were in touch, you see? And they knew they did well, but they needed to get together with the family. And so they went to the family and they, and they poured their hearts out and said, this is what happened to us, this is what we did. And, they, and even though they knew they did the right thing, they, they needed to hear the brothers and sisters say, yeah, you did well, right? Wow, that's amazing how God led you, right? Really? Really? Yes, you did, really? You know, and you already know it, but you need others in the body to say, yeah, you, you're doing good. You're doing, you're doing fantastic. Isn't that what community's supposed to be? It should be. That's what it's supposed to be. You're doing good. That's great. No, that's tough. That was tough. No, we get it. Now, we all know and we know what you know, and, and, and that is... We just need to pray together, you know, because you did good, and, and I, I sense you feel depleted. I feel like, feel that. But we're here for each other, right? We all live in this stuff, you know? Looks different for each one of us, but at the same time, it looks the same. So they prayed in community, right? Acts chapter 4. And when they did, it says, it says when they prayed, the place... There was a shaking that took place. It was amazing. And they were all filled with the Spirit. And there was something profound that happened in that moment that took them into a deeper level of being able to share the Word of God as they needed to share it with the love and great and the respect of the Lord, but with the anointing of God that is translated as they spoke the Word of God boldly, not Rudely, right? But boldly in the sense of there was a fresh freedom to live their faith, right? Isn't that what I say? There was something that 
came on them in a new way. That's the well of community. And they recognize that well. Let us hold sacred and treasure that well that we have together. The importance of Sunday gatherings together. The, the importance of, of, of coming into his manifested presence together is so, so important. It's a place where, where together we, 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 we can sense the presence of God. It's, it is... It is, it, is, it is a place where even if I can't sense it, I know from the Word of God that, there is, that He is here in a way that is very significant. It, it, it is a place where together we, 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 we have God's ear. Right? Together. Do you think those two guys, when they came, came to the church, that they hadn't been praying? Of course they'd been praying. Do you think they went out there and didn't pray? Of course they did. But there was something about the fact that we need more. We need the family. And they prayed together. And so thus, let's remember that as we think of whatever unfolds in, in that distant future time when we come into the fall, which is actually closer than you think, but don't tell Cheryl. Ah, uh, But when we, we get into that new season, guys, right, which is coming pretty quick, really remember community, right? I'm so delighted that we have uh, the ability to live stream and to go online, and uh, it, it really has opened up a new metric for us, which is very profound and interesting within our church. And it touches us when we can't come together or we can't be in fellowship, Right? And it, it subsidizes, and it's, and it's all of that. But it cannot replace the corporate reality of being together, right? There's something profound. It's in, it, you can't, it, it's, it, that's not even tangible. Some of it is and some of it isn't, but we need each other, right? And so in Hebrews 10, 25, it says to us, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage, there's that word again. Let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approach. And, and, our, and our job is to encourage. Our job is to come to encourage, to foster encourager, right? This world can suck stuff, but, 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 but we're here to inspire, encourage, right? Yeah. And why does he say that? He says, as you see the day approaching, he's talking about days that are tough, days with tiring schedules, days with society's pressures. He says, all the more. That becomes an important well in your life, the well of community. Another one, that is the well of the Spirit. And the well of the Spirit also is so important, and all of these interact with the well of the Spirit, of course. The well's these wells make the waters of the Spirit available to us. And yet these wells that we're talking about are simply conduits. Right? They are that which, which allows the electrical currents of the Spirit to flow within us. They are not the Spirit, but they are conduits. They are wells. Right? Right? So we talked about oil wells and gas wells. Well, the well itself isn't the oil. That's not the gas. And we talked about the wells out in Hyde Creek, Creek that a couple of families dug, got dug, 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 dug that bore, whatever the word is. Right? The well itself isn't it, but the well, part of the well is, is that which flows within the well. It is the water. Right? Let's look at a story of Jesus Christ as an example as we think of the wells and the well of the Spirit. But really, we must focus in, and, and focus in on, on the Spirit within our lives. And all of these things help us to touch the Spirit of the Lord, allow the Spirit of the Lord to move in us and through us. And so in John chapter 4, verse 14, again, another familiar story. But a, again, a very powerful story. In John 4, verse 14. And there's this woman at the well. Jesus went and sat at the well. And it says, Jesus said this, New Living Translation. Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. The well from this water, from this well. 
But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life, right? And so that was the message that he spoke to that woman. Isn't it interesting, he says, it will become a fresh, bubbling spring within them. He said, he's saying, if you believe in me, if you read a few verses around it, right? The whole story he's saying, he says, believing in me causes the well of life to come to you because Jesus comes to you. He said, I'll come to you. The Spirit of God will come within you. And so he says, a bubbling spring within them, right? It's not within you yourself. It is because of your relationship with Jesus Christ that he has come to abide, right? Within you. Amen? Isn't that right? And so within that context and that reality, he's within you. And so, so, so we need to believe that that well is flowing through us. Because he is here. He's here. He's within us. He inhabits us. You know, uh, about a year or so ago, Margaret and I uh, decided to switch from our oil furnace to uh, a heat pump. And we're pretty thankful because uh, we, have, we had a forced air oil furnace. And uh, when we looked, checked out the grants, Gabby, we checked out the grants. And when, we, and, and, uh, and when we checked out the grants, we were at the top of what you could get for grants because uh, the government is really trying to help people get away from their oil furnaces and their oil for forced air. So uh, we're thankful we got a couple of grants and it really helped to make it possible for us. So the point is, now we've got a heat pump. And uh, it's in our home and it's forced air, but the heat pump also provides air conditioning, which was kind of handy yesterday because our house was getting a little warm yesterday. We could turn that on, so I just switched from heat to cool, and set the temperature I wanted, and, and on it came. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing is, is that the heat pump is located inside my house. But the heat in the winter and the air conditioning in the summer doesn't come on by itself. I have to turn it on. I have to set it up, or I have to, you know, make the adjustment, whatever, right? It's inside. Well, it's good enough. It's inside. Spirit's inside me. It's good enough. No, you have to. Jesus says spirit's with it, but, but you need to allow his spirit to flow through you. You need to engage the heat pump or the cool pump of the reality of who he is within the house of your being, right? It's also important in order to have the flow of this well of the Spirit of God within your life, it is important that you open up the vents in your house, right? Open up the vents. So you can, you can have one room in your place if you've got forced air, or if you've ever had forced air, and uh, somehow an area of carpet ends up on it, or a bunch of clothes, or a coat gets on that vent in that room, well, it's not very efficient, and you don't get the same amount of heat or the same amount of cool air because the vent's blocked. Well, I said, well, that's common sense. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Well, here's common sense, too, spiritually. Do you want the flow in every room of your life? You have to open on the vents, right? And so God speaks to us, and he says to us, let me in the closets. It's okay. I already know that dark room is there. Yeah, Lord, but I'm embarrassed. I know it's there. Yeah, Lord, but it's pretty bad. I already know. So why don't you take the take that blanket off of that vent? Because we both know it's there. And let me bring some circulation in there. Let me bring in some cool, wonderful, fresh air in to where it's muggy. 
and stale. Because see, the Spirit of God wants to breathe right now by His Spirit into the different closets in your life and the different rooms. He's not saying to clean it up first. That's not the gospel. The gospel is, I already know. Let me in and let me help you. Human nature is, I'll clean it first. But you can't clean it totally without him. So open the vents, right? Invite him into your kitchen. Invite him into your den. Invite him into the basement. Invite him into that closet. Invite him into that living room, into that bedroom. Invite him into that entranceway, right? Because the system will flow better. It's designed. When the heat pump guys came in, they checked. You know what they did? One of the first things they did, they went around my house and they counted how many vents I had. And they measured the size of the house. Why? Because the system works best when you get the right size, right? Heat pump to go with that and the vents are open and so forth. So I work better when I open the vent in my life and allow the wells of the Spirit to flow within me. Right? So I get the fullness of that when I come into community, when I open the word, when I'm in prayer, when I reach out for the wells of salvation and for the strength and the rescuing that I need. Right? You can invite the spirit to release more of his spirit within you. And that's how you open up the vents, just by inviting him to come. That's all there is to it. Right? Have you, have you closed that area in your heart? Just open it up. You know, as we started out, and I'll come back to the story now about Isaac, isn't it interesting that the wells were, they were having problems with the wells back in Isaac's days. One of the reasons is they'd been neglected. And wells have a way of losing capacity and working properly if they're neglected. And so they had got clogged up. They'd been neglected, right? So we got to watch out for that. But also, another thing was what was going on in the hearts of people. They became envious of Isaac because God was blessing him and his herds were growing and his material blessing was growing. And the Philistines and Abimelech, they, they became jealous, and they envied him, right? So they went around, and they clogged up all the wells, right? You know, because they, you know, they couldn't handle, they were jealous of how well he's doing. And there's something terrible about those dark things in our lives, such as jealousy, such as envy, and they become am examples, not just of that, but of other things. And so you're sitting there, and you're thinking, that's relief. Stan talked about envy and jealousy, but he didn't talk about my anger. Um, you and God both know what it is, if there is something, right? You and God both know. And so we think the vent's closed and it's all sealed up, but it really ain't, right? It's affecting your life, and he already knows. The only thing that's changing is are you willing to open the vent? and open the door, right? You know, sometimes isn't that true? You get a vent and it's open, but all the doors are closed, so there can't be this flow, right? You know, so it really doesn't work right either. God's saying, let's open up the vents and let's open up the doors and let my spirit, by my grace, flow through. And what you'll get from me is my love and my joy. Now I'm with you in that. I'm here to heal you. I'm here to minister into your life, right? So that's what it is. It's really a matter of faith as well. Faith. By believing in Jesus, the springs of living water will flow within you. One more story. In Genesis chapter 21, verse 19, I want to talk to you about Hagar. 
for a minute because it's an example here. Genesis 21, verse 19. So Abraham had a son named Ishmael. And uh, he had to let, her, let him go and Hagar go. And they went out into the wilderness. We'll get into all the story. But Hagar ran out of food and water, right? And she couldn't bear to look at her son anymore because she knew he was going to die. The story says in Genesis 21, verse 19, Then God opened Hagar's eyes, and she saw a well full of water. And she quickly filled her water container and gave the, bo the boy a drink. Isn't that interesting? The well was there, but she couldn't see the well. Thank God for his grace that he helped her see. God and his grace will help you see. That being said and done, it takes faith. Faith, faith allows us to see the life-giving well that we need. Faith allows us to receive, right? Faith allows, right? So maybe it hasn't been flowing for you very well in community. Faith allows that well to be opened up because the word says, Church, the community is life giving. Bible devotionals haven't been working for me. Faith allows the well to open up. I haven't been prayed, someone says, in four months. Well, you probably have, but you know, I mean, as far as devotions, faith will, will open the well. Faith will open it up. So here's Hagar. She doesn't, you know, they, they're beyond hope. But God spoke. Faith allows God to speak. In fact, if I be honest, God's already speaking. But faith opens your ears and your spirit that you can see the well that he already has there for you, that you can fill up the water of your vessel and receive, as she said, did that day, word from God as he installed hope upon her that Ishmael would be a great nation. Your son's going to be okay. And she went within seconds from despondent and depressed and overwhelmed with grief that her son was going to die and then she would die to a woman full of hope having received the well of life that God had for her. Faith opens our eyes. We need fresh revelation. God opens our eyes to experience the living wells that we have. So in faith, just believe. Don't sit back and say, that well don't work for me. In faith, God designed it as a conduit for the Spirit of the Lord to flow into your life. So as we move into a new season, allow the wells to minister to you. Allow yourself to think about your will and faith open your heart choose to believe he can again move through these wells through the church through prayer through the wells of salvation and the grace of God through these things through the word of the Lord let him speak to you today father we come to you this morning at this moment and we've touched on different things there are dark things that can obstruct the ability and the flow of, of your water in our lives, such as envy and jealousy, and anger, and other things. Lord Jesus Christ, you invite us to open the doors and open the vents. Lord, and confess those things before you, and in faith believe you that your spirit will flow into all those areas of my life. And so, Lord, we ask your spirit as we Continue to enjoy this season of warmth in the summer here. And, but yet as we move towards the fall, we, we, we invite you, Lord Jesus, into, into the closets of our lives, into the hallways of our lives, into the entranceways of our lives, into the garages of our lives. Lord, we invite you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us. Fill us. Open our eyes to fresh revelation. Lord, we choose to believe. We choose to receive.
we choose to see the freshness of your water in all the wells that you have. We choose, we expect, we look to you now in Jesus' name. And we receive your healing. We receive your forgiveness in areas that have eclipsed the movement of your spirit in our lives. Even as Isaac talked about the people, were talked about the people that envied and were jealous and so forth, Lord, we, we let that go in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you said if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We, we receive your cleansing. We receive all that in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. So let it flow, O God. The Spirit flow within us in your name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Bless God. Well, we're signing off from uh, being online now. Thank you for those that watched us online. And if anybody would like prayer about something that came up in our morning service or something else, please feel free. We'd love to pray for you as well. Otherwise, enjoy your day. Be blessed. Hallelujah. You are blessed. Amen. Yeah, sure. When did that happen? Uh, actually, officially a year later. But I'm still having.